Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall once again, and today we are going to be talking about the battle tactics in the GHB 2021 for Age of Sigmar 3rd Edition. That's a mouthful, and there's a whole lot to talk about with battle tactics. So, let's plow on. So, uh, this is a step further than secondary objectives. Um, previously, secondaries were basically tiebreakers. Now, these are also tiebreakers uh, if the score for the match is tied, but they are part of the main scoring of the game. And a significant amount of your victory points come from battle tactics. So they're going to really shape how you build your list. And specifically, they're going to lean a lot on monsters. As we are playing in the Realm of Beasts in Gur for this season, uh, everything seems to be monster related. So a lot of these things are going to be impacted by monsters. So let's look at overall our scoring for third edition for the 2021 General's Handbook. You get generally up to three points per turn for objectives. That's in most scenarios. Some of them have unique scoring where it's other than that. Some will have less than three points a turn on average. Some will have more than three points per turn on average. But overall, they average out to be roughly three points per turn. So you're looking at a maximum of 15 points from objectives in most scenarios uh, at the end of the game just from objectives. Now you get two points per battle tactic that you complete. And you complete one battle tactic in each of your turns. And then you get an additional point for some of them when you complete them with a monster. So that's looking at 10 points over the course of the game, at least, up to 15 points. Your grand strategy is worth another three points, and then every monster you kill is worth one additional point. So that one's going to be variable based on who your opponent is, but as we're looking at this, we can see that, you know, nearly half of your possible points are sitting in battle tactics. In previous editions of Warhammer, what we were really looking at was if you want to win the game, you play to the objectives. Play to the objectives, play to the objectives, play to the objectives. Doesn't matter if you get tabled, play to the objectives and you'll win games. Now we have to do more than that. We really need to play to our battle tactics as well. And that's going to begin in list building. As I mentioned before, these are also going to be tiebreakers to determine minor victories and minor losses uh, when the score for the round is tied. So and then your tertiary is grand strategies. And then after that, it's just a tie if all of that is still tied. So our different battle tactics, we have in the current battle pack, there are eight battle tactics. Broken ranks, conquer, slay the warlord, ferocious advance, bring it down, aggressive expansion, monstrous takeover, and Savage Spearhead. And we're going to dive into each and every one of these individually. So up first, Broken Ranks. You pick one enemy battle line unit from their starting army that's on the battlefield. And you complete this battle tactic if that is destroyed during this turn. And you get an additional victory point if the a friendly monster or an ability from a friendly monster is what slayed the unit. So, 
This is one that is great for like the mid to late game, particularly when units are already somewhat weakened and you can just go that one and kill it with pretty, uh, pretty good amount of certainty. The bonus is for completing this with a monster, not dealing damage with a monster and then something else killing it after. The monster has to have the killing blow. So to defend against this, you really need strong battle line units. And, a, and that can be a lot of wounds, that can be high defense. Um, you might just... Uh, use your battle line units and sort of hide behind your other units. Some armies are just going to be in a position where like everything is battle line and you know, you're at a disadvantage for broken ranks because it they can just pick any one of your units basically and go after that. Redeploy is an excellent defense against this one. They have to call out the unit at the beginning of the battle. So they're going to obviously have to position themselves in front of that unit if it's not already in combat um, and potentially have to make a charge. So this is, you know, a solid option uh, to redeploy your units when they're uh, selected to uh, be the target of broken ranks. Conquer is our next one up. You pick an objective marker on the battlefield that your opponent controls, and you complete this tactic if you gain control of that objective by the end of the turn. There's no monster bonus for this one. Um, in general, like you're going to need a strong hammer to get this most of the time. You know, unless there's a really weakly contested objective, you're going to need to move something in that is going to slam your opponent's unit out of there. Or you also have the option to go like the Skaven route and just charge in a whole bunch of clan rats and just outbody them on an objective and not worry about clearing them off. Once again, redeploy and all out defense are very good in this particular one. Uh, redeploy can just make you fail a charge. All-out defense can just make that unit holding an objective more sticky. So this one is one of the, I think, a little bit harder ones to do uh, because it relies on you taking control of an objective and that often is going to mean surviving combat and winning combat. Up next is Slay the Warlord. So you basically pick your opponent's general and you've got to kill them by the end of the turn. And if you do it with a friendly monster, you score an additional victory point. So this is going to vary wildly with who your opponent's general is. If this is a five wound, six up save chump, this is going to be a very easy one to complete. If this is Archeon, good luck. So it's going to vary a lot. If your opponent has a general that's also a monster, it's going to be really hard to take them down. And as we'll see later, um, there may be better options for doing that as well. Um, because, you know, if your opponent's general is not, like, a really strong defensive piece, they're probably going to be hanging back. So you're going to need something really mobile, maybe something flying to get after them, or having some shooting to get after them. You know, the easy way to deny your opponent this battle tactic is to just keep your general hidden behind the lines and having strong defenses on your general. And of course, with many of these, redeploy is your friend if you're trying to prevent your opponent from getting this. 
Ferocious Advance. This is probably the easiest battle tactic to do. You pick three units from your starting army that are on the battlefield, and you complete this battle tactic if they all run, and they end within three inches of each other. And then if all three of those units are monsters, you get one additional victory point. Big note here is that you don't have to use the full movement of those units when you run. So you can just sort of like have three units that are already close to each other and they can like not move, basically. They can move like a quarter of an inch and they satisfy the requirements for this as long as they all end within three of each other. It's really, really hard to deny your opponent this. This is one that's very commonly done like first turn because you might not have any other battle tactics you can complete first turn, but this one you can always do. Um, that monster bonus is really hard to get for most armies. Some armies, it is so easy. I'm thinking Flesh Eater Courts, Beast Claw Raiders, Sons of Bayamat. I'm sure I'm missing some. For those, that extra bonus point is a slam dunk. For everybody else, it is likely impossible. Bring it down! This one is a great one. You pick one enemy monster on the battlefield and you complete this battle tactic if that unit is destroyed during this turn. And if you kill it with an enemy, mo a friendly monster, you get a bonus point. So it's totally reliant on your opponent having a monster to kill at all. So this may be one that you simply can't do. One nice little side effect of this is that it always comes with an extra victory point when you complete the battle tactic because you get an extra victory point for slaying a monster. Watch out for redeploy with this one. Um, also, if you're on the defensive, definitely use redeploy if you can. Um, completing this with a monster can be hard. Uh, you need a, a particularly fighty monster to really be able to pull this one off or have a, a monster that's already weakened and you move your monster in to finish them off. Uh, Titanic Duel can certainly help you get that little extra bit of power in there. Um, as well as Stomp can just get some mortal wounds through. If you're trying to stop your opponent from doing this, you need to have durable monsters. And overall, I think in the current battle pack, it's definitely valuable to have monsters, but you need to make sure that they're durable because every one of those just has a victory point hanging around its neck ready for your opponent to snag. So you need to use them carefully to deny your opponent this battle tactic as well as that extra bonus point. Aggressive expansion. Now this one is one that I had to read this several times. When I first read this, I definitely read it wrong, as well as some of these others, by the way. Um, in preparing this video, I definitely took a closer look at these than I had previously and realized that I had been playing them wrong. And there, many of them are a lot easier to complete than I thought they were. So aggressive expansion, you pick two objective markers on the battlefield that are not wholly within your territory. And you complete the battle tactic if you control both objective markers at the end of the turn. So, you can do this when you already control those objectives at the beginning of the turn. This is not about taking over an objective. It's about holding objectives. So, that's where this particular one got me because the name aggressive expansion implies taking objectives but this is about holding objectives and the other important note here is when a an objective marker is on the border of your territory it is not wholly within your territory therefore it counts 
So this applies to a whole lot of scenarios where you can just get a aggressive expansion turn one without moving any units. Like you can do absolutely nothing past turn and score this. There's no monster bonus here. And it's sort of a win more tactic. It's like, you know, you want to sit on objectives to win the game more better. So, you know, holding two objectives is a pretty obvious one. And this is going to be really hard if you don't do it early in the game and you're losing. It's not going to be a go-to. Um, much easier for some scenarios than others. Some scenarios, there's going to be just objectives out in the middle of the battlefield, and it's going to be hard to uh, control two of them at once, especially if you go second. Um, others, you know, you're going to have those objective markers starting on the border of your territory, and you capture them and take them, you know, in the first battle round, and you complete this battle tactic in the first battle round. So, it, it, this one's very swingy. Monstrous Takeover. You pick one monster from your starting army that's on the battlefield, and you complete this battle tactic if that monster is contesting an objective marker that you control at the end of the turn, and that objective marker is not contested by an enemy monster. So this requires you to have a monster in your list in order to complete. Preferably one that can fight and help you clear objectives. There's no monster bonus here because the whole thing is oriented around monsters to begin with. The other thing to note here is that the monster doesn't need to clear off the objective. You don't need to take the objective from your opponent. This is another one of those that's easy to misread because of the name of it. That monster just needs to be sitting on the objective. It doesn't even have to be the majority of bodies on the objective. This can be an objective that is in your deployment zone at the start of the game and you just park a monster on it and boom, you get this turn one. Not hard to do very difficult to stop your opponent from doing this. Um, you know, in those missions where the objectives are out in the middle of the field, you know, keep your opponent's monsters busy, keep them chaffed and screened to keep them off objectives, keep your opponent in general off objectives. But basically, as soon as you lose an objective that a monster is near, your opponent's going to be able to grab this, and vice versa. So, this one, um, this one's also fun to just like rush in your monsters and go stomp, stomp, stomp. I have the objective now. Anyway, Savage Spearhead. You complete this battle tactic if there are two or more units from your starting army wholly within your opponent's territory at the end of the turn. If two or more of those units are monsters, you score an additional victory point. So this one, for a lot of armies, is really difficult to achieve. In most scenarios, your territory is just your deployment zone. So you've got to get two units all the way across the board, wholly within your opponent's deployment zone, to score this. To do it with monsters is even harder. But armies that have ambush or deep strike abilities, you know, Stormcast Eternals can just drop out of the heavens into your opponent's territory and score this battle tactic easily. It's, you know, you've got Gutrot Spume, for example. He comes with a unit of Blight Kings off the, the board edge. You just come on into your opponent's territory. Bam! You got this right there. You complete the battle tactic. Top of turn one. Um, what you really have to do to prevent this is zone your opponent out of your territory to try and deny them of it. For the armies that can do this, it's really, really easy. If you don't have a slam dunk way to do this one, it is really hard. So, 
keep that in mind in your list building and maybe even army selection as to what you can do. This particular one makes me rethink using Gut Rot Spume in my Nurgle lists because he just would give me this on turn one. And it's just another give me uh, battle tactic that you can use. So that's all the battle tactics. Um, my takeaways from this, you can't just play the objectives anymore. It's not, I would say it's not the only path to victory, but it's not even like a path to victory. You have to do your battle tactics. If you don't, you're going to not be able to score enough points to win, like plain and simple. Some tactics are really big in scoring. Um, some of them are easier than others. Some armies have huge advantages in taking certain ones. I like that they have mixed it up so that there are certain battle tactics that are easy for some armies and hard for some armies, and the different ones that have that kind of weighting I don't think are ever really the same army. So, you know, different armies are just going to have different advantages for different battle tactics. I like this. It's a lot of fun. Um, you definitely want monsters in your army to get extra points from your battle tactics. Here's the problem, though. The more monsters you put in your list, the more potential bonus points your opponent gets for killing them. So, personally, I think having one strong monster in your list is the way to go. So you have the ability to get those bonuses, but you're minimizing the amount of points that you're giving up to your opponent. So, that's my opinion. One strong one, maybe two strong ones, and uh, just do your best with those. So that's about it for now, guys. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, comment down below, turn on your notifications if you're new here and you uh, are subscribing for the first time uh, to get all of the updates when our new videos hit. If you'd care to support the channel further, you can find us on Patreon. The link is down in the description of the video. You can also join us on Facebook and on Twitter to chat further about everything. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys later.